David as a distinct man from every person in the Bible, it's that when he got knocked down, when he failed, he would get on his knees before God and he would find a place of repentance. But he wouldn't stay in a place of shame. He wouldn't stay in a place of guilt and condemnation. He would get conviction in his spirit and he would get back up and he'd begin to praise the Lord. It didn't matter how much David had failed. It didn't matter the moral mistakes that he had made. He got back up and he gave God praise in his imperfection. And I wonder right now if we could all just admit we're a little imperfect. And I wonder if we could give him an imperfect praise. Give him a praise that out, out. Give him a praise that shouts louder than your mistakes. Give him a praise that from the deepest part of your belly, let a shout arise. Come on, we're going to sing that song again. And you watch as the chains begin to fall. You watch as the dwells begin to come down. Because that's what praise does. Amen. We're going to go back into it. You are 
are the God. You are the God of the breakthrough. Breakthrough. Come break on, you through. pulled it out this morning. Breakthrough. 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 Break you are the God. You are the God of the breakthrough. 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 atmosphere like this if you have a need in this place whether it be spiritual physical emotional whatever the need may be if you would just raise your hand across this place we're going to join with you in prayer and we're going to especially be praying for the Gomez family this week that um, the tests that they are going to the doctor for would come back uh, with result with favorable results we know a God who is a healer we know a God who is a way maker and there's nothing too great for our God. And that God is in the room this morning, amen? And he sees you, he sees your need. And we're gonna lift up a prayer of faith in this place that God would meet your need. God, we've come before you this morning, humbly approaching your throne, knowing that you are our provider, knowing that you are our way maker, knowing that you move every mountain and you part every sea. God, you have put everything into perfect order in this world. And though our situation may be imperfect, though it may be unfavorable, though we didn't see ourselves here, though we never thought that we would need a miracle, God, here we are in need of a miracle. And we're in a perfect place this morning because where two or three are gathered, there are you in the midst of them. And we know that you are walking these pews, that you have sent angels into this room ministering angels to meet the unique needs of your people in a time such as this God so we don't worry and we don't fear because we know that you are able and we give you all the glory we give you all the praise we give you all the honor that is due of the King of Kings the Lord of Lords God Almighty we thank you Jesus can we give him a hand clap of praise right now hallelujah someone would come to the front and be in prayer for the Gomez family this week. We are a church family who loves each other, who prays for each other, and just know that you have found a church family that loves you, amen? A couple of quick reminders this week. On Saturday, March 23rd, we are going to be doing um, a kids' day at the park. This is going to be a time for your family to come out to enjoy some fellowship with each other, but we also want to share the light that God has given us, and we want to be um, a positive influence in this community. We want to reach this community, amen. There are souls in Orange County that need what you have here. And so we want to uh, be using that time to invite people to join us on Easter Sunday. We're going to bring out water bottles and invite cards. And, you know, the kids are going to be playing. So they're going to see that we're a family church, that we're a fun church. We know how to have fun, amen. Church doesn't have to be boring. It doesn't have to be ritualistic. We can have fun outside of these walls. And so that's what we're going to do on Saturday. We're going to make an impact on our community. We're going to pass water bottles out. We're going to invite people to join us on Easter Sunday. And Easter Sunday is going to be Saturday, uh, Sunday, March 31st. I know it's a little weird that it's in March this year. But Sunday, March 31st is our Easter Sunday experience. And we're so excited for what God is going to do. We believe that we're going to see people baptized. We're going to see people filled with the Holy Ghost. And if these past few weeks have been any indicator of what God plans to do in that service, it's going to be explosive. Amen. And so we're be in prayer, be fasting for that. Um, any children that come will be getting an Easter bag. And then, of course, we'll have donuts and drinks and coffee available for the parents and adults. And we want to encourage people to stick around for fellowship and get to know us. Amen. Moving forward, we want to go into offering at this time. And we have a practice of doing an offering declaration here. And so if you would repeat after me, upon the authority of your word, I have given, and it shall be given to me, pressed down, shaken together, 
and running over. I am a tither and I give offerings. I bring them today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked, the curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, estates and inheritance, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished, royalties received. I believe my family shall be saved and walk with God. I receive into my life health and abundance to walk in divine favor and blessings. I'm blessed going in. I'm blessed going out. All that I do will prosper. In Jesus' name, amen. At this time, you may come forward and give in the offering as you join back in worship with our praise team.
put your hands together and give God a praise. Nothing is impossible. Wow. The presence of the Lord is here today. Would you just say that with me? Nothing is impossible. Why don't you just say it one more time? Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. There is two ways that you can state that. First of all, nothing is impossible, meaning that there is absolutely nothing that God cannot do. But there is another side that I believe ought to make us shout just as much as that. And that is the fact that nothing is impossible. Or let me state it this way. Nothing is an impossibility. It is impossible that nothing will happen in this house today. Come on now, you're not going to leave the same way you came. You're going to be changed by the power of God. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this house on a Sunday afternoon. And where he is, anything, somebody say anything, is possible. Anything is possible. And nothing is an impossibility. God's going to show up and show out in the midst of your circumstance and your situation. Nothing is impossible. Thank you, praise team. Nothing is impossible. My Lord, that's just blessing me today. Nothing is impossible. Woo, ha. My Lord, I feel the Holy Ghost all over this house right now. Yes, yes, yes. There's breakthrough in this house. Somebody say breakthrough. You know, there's a term that I don't hear as much in modern day Pentecost. But I grew up hearing it. And I grew up preaching it. And that is praying through. Now, don't get your hackles up. There's another old-fashioned word. Don't get your hackles up. Don't get offended. But some of you need a good praying through. I want, I want you just to think about that, that word for a minute. Praying through. You may be butting your head against something that is hindering you and holding you back. But you can pray through that thing that has been binding you, that thing that has been hindering you, that thing that is holding you back. And on the other side, on the other side is a breakthrough. On the other side, you can say, I prayed through this situation. And when you wake up on Monday morning and God has blessed you and you know you're blessed, but the devil comes back around, the Bible does say he does that. Come on now, the spirits came and they looked in the house and the house was empty. And when they moved back in the house, it was sevenfold worse. 
the devil does come back around and check and make sure you're living in the breakthrough you received on Sunday. And he comes back around and he starts reminding you of what you were worried about before you got to the house of God on Sunday. He starts reminding you of the affliction in your body. He starts reminding you of the financial pressure. He starts reminding you of the situation on your job and the circumstance in your home and and he starts reminding you of that. Let me tell you why you need a good praying through. Because you can stand up in the middle of that circumstance and say, get thee behind me, Satan. I went to the house of God on a Sunday afternoon and I prayed my way through this. I'm not going down, I'm going over. I'm not. This thing isn't going to destroy me. This thing isn't going to defeat me. I'm not going to be disillusioned. I'm going through. I don't know about you, but I want a good old-fashioned praying through. Amen. Amen. When things start coming against me, as they will against every one of us at times, my wife knows the best thing I can do is get alone. And if it's a little problem, give me an hour or two. I'll, I'll pray my way through it. If it's a little longer, I'll get my trailer and I'll go for a couple of days. But before I get done, I'm going to pray my way through that situation. Because I need a praying through. I, I don't know why I'm stuck on this. This really isn't what I'm about to preach. Uh, but I feel in the Holy Ghost, uh, there's some people in this building uh, that is just right there. And you need to pray your way through that. You need an old-fashioned breakthrough service. You need the blessing of God to be poured out. You need God to give you a, a comfort and a confidence that you will win and you can win in this house today the victory. Now I say this from time to time. We're about to pray, but I say this from time to time. We are a multi-generational church. I want you to keep that in mind because I'm going to touch on that just briefly here in a few minutes in the in in the opening comments of my message. But we are a multi-generational church. And we are blessed to be a multi-generational church. Yes, we are. Thank God for, how do I want to say this? Our middle age and elders. Thank God for you. Because you add a stability, a steadfastness to the house of God by being a part of this church. Yes, you do. But don't disqualify nor discredit the young people in this house. Because there are some youth in this house that grew up in this church. I've seen pictures. Last time I checked Flickr, there were some pictures there still of some of these that are in their 20s now that were snotty-nosed kids 18 years ago. But you know what? They stayed. They stuck it out. If it's good enough for mommy, it's good enough for me. I believe there's something about what God is getting ready to do in this house, not just today, but in the day.
days coming forward that we're going to see some things unfold that we've not yet experienced. So I'm just going to tell you, don't get too hip on those that talk about, well, it's a young church. Well, let me tell you something. The beauty of a church is that it's got some gray-haired people that have stood and maybe even a couple of us that lost our hair in the middle of it, but we stood. And in the middle of that, there's some young strength, some young vitality that says I'm making a commitment that every time I walk through the doors of the house of God, I'm going to see and I'm going to experience the blessings of God. And when I have children, and some of them have had children already, when I have a child, I'm going to make sure my children fall in love with God and the church and put some roots down. So they can walk in the same blessing. I don't know why I just felt to, to say that. But that's one of the blessings of being a part of a multi-generational church. Had a man came in a few weeks ago. And, and, and he caught me back here as we were leaving. And he said, do I see three generations of the same families? There's... I said, yeah, there's, we, we've got some three-generation families that are in this church. Grandma's here. Mom and dad's here. The kids are here. Somebody ought to just say, praise God. But in the middle of that, we've also got some first generation. Somebody ought to say, praise God. Because I'm going to tell you, every bit of it comes together to produce a productive group of people that is able to see and experience the breakthrough blessings and the dimension of destiny altar and revival that we're expecting and believing God to continue. So we're going to pray. Then you may be seated. Heavenly Father, God, I thank you for what I feel in this house. I thank you for what I sense you doing in this place. I thank you, God, for the outpouring of your spirit that's here. I thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost that's working already through this building. I pray for every, I pray for every person in this house, no matter how young, no matter how old. I pray, God, that they would be able to encounter you in a fresh way. In a new way today, God, let us get a glimpse, a fresh revelation of what you're about to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody shout amen. You may be seated. Would you just give the Lord a praise as you're being seated? Hallelujah. Somebody say breakthrough. Breakthrough. God doesn't give us every breakthrough the same way. In fact, God doesn't do every miracle the same way. If he did, most people would reduce faith to a formula. Three steps to a breakthrough. Seven steps to victory. Five steps to revival. I've evangelized almost 18 years. I've pastored over 18 years. And I can tell you revival cannot be reduced to a formula. Life change cannot be reduced to a formula. Miracles cannot be reduced to a formula. God chooses to work in different ways, in different situations, altering different circumstances. He's too big to put God in a box. I come
come today with a biblical principle that I have felt for the past couple of weeks that this was going to be the day that I would preach this message. God chooses to work in different ways. For instance, some breakthroughs come suddenly. Isaiah chapter 29 and verse 5. Moreover, the multitude of thy strangers shall be like small dust. And the multitude of the terrible ones shall be as chaff that passeth away. Yea, it shall be at an instant, suddenly. Catch that word, suddenly. Thou shalt be visited of the Lord of hosts with thunder and the earthquake and great noise, with storm and tempest and the flame of devouring fire. But I want you to notice that it happened at an instant suddenly. There are some breakthroughs that come suddenly. Acts chapter 2, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire and it sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. How did it happen? And suddenly... I'm telling you, you've got a God that is able to work miracles suddenly. You've got a God that is able to give you your breakthrough suddenly. God is able to deliver you suddenly. The Bible said in Isaiah 29, that the multitude of strangers would be like small dust and the multitude of the terrible ones would be like chaff that would be passing away with the wind blowing, would blow the chaff away. And, And in the middle of all this, the thunder and the earthquakes and the great noise and the storm and the tempest and the flame of devouring fire and all of that happened in an instant, suddenly. Oh, hallelujah. I'm telling you today, God can work your miracle suddenly. It doesn't take God a long time to turn around that situation. It does not take God a long time to change the circumstance that you are confronted with. You need to recognize that you have a God that is able to do it in an instant, suddenly. Here's why it's important that you recognize we're in a multi-generational church. Because at times, God does miracles suddenly. I don't want to pick on our elders, but let me talk to the elders. Let me talk to the middle age. Don't that seem strange? Middle age. I'm not even going to talk about elders. But I'm going to tell you one of the greatest problems that you get when you've lived life a little while. Can I say it that way, a little while? When you've lived life a little while, is you realize that everything doesn't always come as quick as you thought it would come. Matter of fact, the only thing that seems to come quickly is the passing of days turning into weeks, months, years, and decades. I'm 
preachers walk into the pulpit and preach about suddenly and you've been living with problems you've been looking into situations and circumstances that have not seemed to change some of them not they've not changed in years but they've not changed in decades and you're sitting there and you're asking yourself the question, how can I believe for a suddenly when I've been dealing with this problem, when I've been feeling this pressure for such a long time? Let me tell you how you can do it. Because if the Bible said that God's able to do something suddenly, he's able to turn your situation around suddenly. There are some breakthroughs that do come suddenly. Now I've, I've made all the middle aged and the elders angry with me. Now I'm going to mess with the young people. Because here's where the young people have a problem. I feel the tension rising in the room. There's another type of breakthrough. And this breakthrough doesn't come suddenly. Let's read about this. In Exodus chapter 23 verse 29, I will not drive them out before thee in one year, lest the land become desolate and the beast of the field multiply against thee. By little and little, I will drive them out from before thee until thou be increased and inherit the land. God is speaking here to the children of Israel in anticipation of them going into the promised land. And he wants them to know when you cross the Jordan River and you enter into that land of promise, there's going to be nations that have lived there. And all the nations that are there are not just going to be pushed out and disappear because you crossed through Jordan. Now don't get in a hurry, young person. Don't get impatient. Because there are some miracles. There are some breakthroughs. There are some revivals that they come. Little by little. Little by little. Now don't you disqualify that promise that you've gotten from God just because you didn't get a suddenly with it, Susan. See, I threw you with the young people. How about that? Don't disqualify the fact that God promised you the land. It is yours. But it's not just going to happen in a year. My wife and I was driving back. We had had to make a business, a little business venture thing down to uh, San Diego County. And we were down there for the afternoon and we were driving back and we were fighting traffic and Five on a Saturday evening is, or afternoon is not always the best place to be. And we were on our way back and I looked over at my wife and I said, Baby, I got a question. Let's, let's, let me just throw this out for the sake of conversation. And I started talking about something that if you would have asked me one year ago if that thing would not have changed. Can I be transparent? I'd have said it will change. But you know, there's some things that happen little by little. Oh no, don't 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 sit down on me because I'm telling you it's 
it don't always come in a suddenly. If God's promised you the breakthrough, if God's promised you the revival, I don't care if you've been waiting a year or 10 years or 20 years, I come to preach to you that God is still God. He is not a liar. If he promised it to you, it is coming. If he promised it to you, there is a breakthrough about to happen. Come on, somebody ought to get happy right now because you've been given some promises. You've been given some dreams. You've seen some visions. And God has said it's yours. Don't throw the towel in. Don't quit. Don't give up hope. You need to stand up again and say, I still believe. I still believe. I'm going to tell you what has helped me. And I'm, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. But I'm just going to tell you what's helped me. It has helped me to remember the things God did in that period of time that helps move you and position you for the promise. Just, just hold on to that a minute. He said, it's not going to happen in a year. He said, he said those, 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 those people are there. Deuteronomy 7.22 gives a little bit more insight into that, into that same circumstance. It says, the Lord thy God will put out those nations before thee. God's going to put out the nations before thee. How's he going to do it? By little and little. You know what? We get impatient. I, I threw myself in that one. We get impatient. The moment God says, you're about to have this happen. I'm about to bless you with this. I'm about to give you this. At that moment, you immediately start shouting. I have flown enough that this is a pretty good illustration, pretty apt. Sometimes the better thing to do is grab the seatbelt and put it on. Because the captain's just giving you fastened seatbelt light. I'm, you're about to hit a little bit of turbulence. But in the midst of the turbulence. In the midst of the airplane being shook. Got that seatbelt on. Because you've got your mind made up. I'm going to stay with the plane. If God promised it to me, it's mine. I, I, I'm not going to throw the towel in. I'm not, I'm not going to get all upset and anxious and frustrated. And Because it's still a breakthrough whether it comes suddenly or whether it comes little by little. Can I preach to the church corporate for a moment and tell you it's still a revival whether it comes suddenly or whether it comes little by little. God knows exactly how to bless you. God knows exactly how to give you the breakthrough that you're in need of. Don't get frustrated because it's not a suddenly. It's still a breakthrough even when it comes little by little. Lord thy God will put out these nations before thee by little and little. Thou mayest not consume them at once, lest the beast of the field increase upon thee. But the Lord thy God shall deliver them unto thee and shall destroy them with a mighty destruction until they be destroyed. But it didn't happen suddenly, Pastor. I thought I was going to get my miracle last year. But little by little. 
I'm going to tell you what you got to do when you're living outside the realm of the suddenly. And I'm going to state it again. God is well able to give you a suddenly. But if he chooses to give you a little by little, which I feel in the spirit for the last few weeks uh, as God's been dealing with me about this, I feel like there's some people in this building uh, that, is, that is minimizing the little. I'm going to tell you, God doesn't do miracles halfway. God doesn't even give you a little to frustrate you. When you get the little and you don't see the fulfillment yet, say, I'm looking for another little. Because little by little, God is bringing me through. Somebody say it with me. Little by little. Little by little. Mm. You need to stand firm in your faith. You need to have confidence in God. It may be that all you see right now is a little. Just a cloud the size of a man's hand. A little. But before it was over with, it was going to be a downpour. It was going to be a rip-roaring storm. But all he saw was a cloud the size of a man's hand. Are you with me today? Little by little. You need to learn I need to learn, we all need to learn to thank God for the little. <laughs> Pastor, I need a job. Haven't got a job yet. But you're looking through Craigslist or wherever and you see an ad offering a job. What if at that moment, rather than saying, I probably won't get it anyhow, maybe you never talk to anybody that's, that thinks like that, well, I ain't going to get it anyway. I won't get a call back anyhow. What if instead, you lifted up your hands and you started saying, God, you are Jehovah Jireh. You are the one that provides. The mere fact that I looked in this website and I saw a job offer lets me know there are jobs that are out there. And I'm going to praise you. I'm going to praise you first of all because it is here. If I don't get it, I'm going to praise anyway because God kept me from getting a job that I didn't need. If I get it, I get the call back. Guess what? Hang up the phone. Lift the hand. God, you are my provider. I got an interview. I thank you, God, because you let me know that I got something profitable to offer. You let me know I've got something. And if I get there and the interview don't go the way I think it ought to go, and I walk out knowing that ain't the job, well then thank you God, I'm not wasting any more time. I might have got that job and worked a week and had to quit because it wasn't the job I needed. Thank you God for protecting me. Come on, I'm telling you, God does. 
does miracles little by little. You and I need to learn how to praise and worship our God for the little. It's important when we're praying for direction and discernment to note that God doesn't work the same way every time. Some miracles do come suddenly, but some miracles do come little by little. And I've got to thank him for the little by little. Step by step. Little by little. Give him thanks for the step. Give him thanks for the little. Don't make the tragic mistake of waiting until everything is done to praise him. Go ahead and praise him with the little. Go ahead and praise him with the step. My Lord, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. You know me, I'd love to run and rip and snort and shout and preach this thing high. But I feel just a depth of the Holy Ghost. God is working on our mind. God is working on our heart. Come on. He will do the suddenly. But when he chooses to do the little by little... You still got to be able to give him thanks. Zechariah 4 and 10. For who hath despised the day of small things? Who hath despised the day of small things? Notice the next four words. For they shall rejoice. And shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with these sevens. They are the eyes of the Lord which run to and fro through the whole earth. Here's what I want you to understand. Small things, small beginnings are not something to despise. They're something to rejoice in. Yeah, I want the fulfillment of it. I don't know what your fulfillment looks like. Maybe it is that new job. I know you want to slide up to the desk and look at that little gold thing sitting on your desk that says the position, the title. I, I know you want to open the door and climb in that new car and... Smell the new car scent. I, I, I know, I know. I know you're looking for that moment when the mortgage officer is going to hand you the keys to that house. I, I know, I know, I know. We want the everything. We want the everything. But don't despise the small beginnings it's in that starting place it's in that starting place that you ought to start things out right by rejoicing and giving God praise and giving God thanks you need to go ahead and thank him when it's just a small beginning Little by little. You know, it's a big thing to be faithful in the little thing. Can you be faithful to praise him in the little? You want to see how God looks at the little? I think this is probably one of the greatest scriptures that reveals this biblical truth. Matthew 25, verse 22. 
He also that had received two talents, that's two coins of monetary value in, in their economic system. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou delivered us unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler. I'll give you authority over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. In this passage, like I said at the beginning, it's talking about two coins. And it's speaking about bringing economic increase or financial increase. He stuck two coins and now he's got four coins. But don't stop there. Dig to the under layer of this surface, uh, under the surface, and see the principle, the truth that is being portrayed. The principle here is that when you and I are faithful in a small thing, in a small thing, a little thing, a few coins, two coins, when we're faithful in a small thing, we are blessed with big things and more responsibility because now he's not only responsible for the two coins, he's responsible for the four coins. That teaches you and I a biblical truth that you and I have got to understand that when God starts doing little things in your life, don't get frustrated, don't get aggravated, but instead recognize the value of the little. And if you'll be faithful over the little, God will give you authority over more things, bigger things. Ah, Lord. I feel the Holy Ghost starting to move in this house right now. Would you lift your hands? I know Cosete. He Shataya. Yes, God, speak. Speak to our hearts. Speak to our mind, God. Stir us, God. Stir us. Jesus. Jesus. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Come on, can you praise him over the little? Can you praise him over the little? Can you praise him over it? Because it's little by little that your breakthrough is coming. It's little by little that your revival is coming. It's little by little that blessings are Little by little. Don't devalue, don't minimize the little. A year ago, some of you were praying for things that you haven't seen yet. Can I paint pictures? Can I paint pictures for a moment? Let me let me paint you a picture. God. I want revival in my family. 
been a year. You look around and it seems like your family's not drawn any closer to God. But you forgot. You forgot that on Mother's Day your child reached out to you. You forgot that that, that little one can't put their arms around your grandma. Grandma, can I go to church? You forgot. You've been believing. You've been believing for revival in your family. Don't discredit the little things. I'm preaching to somebody. It's coming little by little. I'll tell you how it works. <laughs> I'll tell you how it works. Sitting in the house the other day. No, 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 no situation I had been praying about financially. But I've been praying in a general scope about some things that I was believing God to do. And how many, how many of you know the scripture does teach us that money answereth all things? It does, it, that is in the Bible. I, I know, I know, we love to talk about the other one, the root of money. The love of money. It's the root of evil. But sometimes, sometimes here's what you need. Sometimes you're like me. Sometimes you're like me. You're sitting there. All of a sudden you get a phone call. Hey, I need you to come by the office. You're like, dear Lord, what did I do now? And you walk in there and you see somebody that isn't on your favorite list of people. And by the way, you know you're not on their favorite list either. And when you walk through the door, they say, I got something for you. And they reach down and pull a check out and hand it to you. Ooh, pastor got a $100,000 mirror. No, no, no. It was just $250. Just $250. Now, if I needed $250, that would have been, wow. It really didn't make a dent in what I've been praying and believing God for. And I'm walking back from my car to the apartment and it dropped in my spirit because I've been studying this. God's been talking to me about this and all of a sudden I looked at that little check and I said that's not enough but little by little. I'm preaching to somebody right now. You would have minimized like I almost did. You would have not put it into the picture. The moment I looked at that and I recognized the timing of God, I looked at that check. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hello, somebody. I'm, 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 little by little. I'm wrapping it up. I'm, I've done preached way, way, way too long. But I want you to understand something. Philippians 4, 6 to 9, he taught us that with prayer, I don't have time to preach all this, but he taught us that with prayer and supplication that we also needed to add thanksgiving. Come on. you got to be able to give God thanks in the midst of your situation. Prayer plus thanksgiving equals breakthrough. Maybe it doesn't come suddenly. Maybe it does. But it's coming. It's coming.
Ecclesiastes 8, I don't have time, but Ecclesiastes 8, verse 4, where the word of a king is, there is power. But in verse number 5, it says, A wise man's heart discerns both time and judgment. I'm going to tell you, the wise man's heart not only knows uh, what it's his responsibility to do, uh, but also he knows the right time and opportunity. He also knows the right manner in which it should be performed. Uh, what's that mean? Uh, it means sometimes God gives you a little, uh, and he waits to see what you're going to do with the little. Uh, and when you begin to take that step of faith when you begin to move into that dimension into that realm God says okay now here's another little and it becomes little by little and then he sees you praising him again and he says here's another little and little by little we're moving in the dimension of destiny we're moving into that place of breakthrough we're moving into that place with the promises of God are being fulfilled in our life. Man, Lord have mercy. I've got so much more to preach. I'm going to just tell you. Isaiah 60 verse 22. A little one shall become a thousand. A small one shall a small when a strong nation, I the Lord will hasten it in his time, meaning the church is going to be miraculously multiplied. When's it going to happen? I don't see it, Pastor. When's it going to happen? It's going to happen in his time. Not our time. We might wish we could hasten it, to use the biblical word. We might wish we could speed it up. But it will come. Somebody say it will come in his time. It will come in his time. It will come in his time. The psalmist said the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. He sees little by little, step by step. Can I tell you something? I've had to learn this. I had to learn this. I hope I can share it with you so you don't have to learn it from the school of hard knocks where the colors are black and blue. Getting my head kicked in a few times. Listen. God not only orders our steps. God orders our stops. And when you take a step, and all of a sudden it seems like the brakes go on. <clears throat> and you go a day. You go a week. Yeah, a month. Oh yeah, a year. Uh-huh. A decade. And it seems like nothing's changing. Don't forget, God orders your steps and he also orders your stops. Don't get frustrated. Don't get angry, don't get anxious, don't get worried, don't get frazzled. God orders our steps, aligning it with his timing, Isaiah 60, 22. Ecclesiastes 3 and 1, to everything there is a season and a time to ever purpose under the heaven. Galatians 6 and 9, we all know this, and let us not be weary in well-doing. Let us not be weary in well-doing. Every time I read that, my mind immediately goes to that passage in Isaiah. Even the youth shall faint and weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. I'm preaching to somebody today, don't quit, don't give up, don't throw in the towel. Why? Why? Because the rest of that 
Isaiah 40, 30 and 31 says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. You wouldn't be able to walk without fainting. You wouldn't be able to run without being weary. You wouldn't be able to soar into the sky like an eagle if you didn't learn the value of waiting when God orders a stop in your life. Give me five minutes and I'll wrap it up. I promise you. I'm that close to being done. Somebody needs to hear this though. Be not weary in well doing. Oh by the way I didn't quote all that verse. The rest of that passage in Galatians 6 and 9 goes on to say for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. got to be able to soar. You got to be able to run. You got to be able to walk. But you know what it never said you got to be able to do? It never said you got to be able to quit. It never said you got to give up. No, no, no. If you give up, you choose to give up. If you quit, you choose to quit. God might order your stop, but he's not ordering your quit. The psalmist said it like this, weeping may endure for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. Just keep on keeping on. Because the same God that promised it will fulfill his promise. Little by little. You know what blows my mind? I, I jumped over this verse in, in my hurry to close but the Bible also is quick to tell us that sometimes when you're going through the little by little you hit that moment where all of a sudden there's a suddenly I, I, oh I feel in the Holy Ghost tonight that that is for somebody in this house you're going through the little by little and you're thinking I got it it's going to take me another five years it's going to take me another decade it isn't going to do that God's about to send a suddenly into your life you might have been living little by little but for somebody a suddenly is about to become a reality But I'll tell you what I'm looking for in this house. I'm looking for a breakthrough. It may come little by little or it may come suddenly. But that's the kind of breakthrough God has promised. If you've got a promise from God, I know this may not be for everybody, but if you've got a promise from God, that there was a breakthrough coming into your life, coming into that situation, coming into that circumstance. If you've got a promise from God that there's that breakthrough coming, would you stand with me to your feet? You're the one I've been preaching to today. You're the one I've been reaching for. Here's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for that one that says whether it comes suddenly or whether it comes little by little. God, I'm going to stay faithful with the small things. I'm going to stay faithful with the small beginnings. I know, God, that you are able to do. You're able to do it suddenly or little by little. I wonder if you'd step out from where you're at. So singers and musicians are coming. Would you step out from where you're at? Come to this front. Bring that little with you. Bring that little. Because it's coming little by little. Heavenly Father.